In this video, we are going to discuss the remaining two useful results of OLS that we have. So the fourth useful result is summation EI multiplied by capital XI is equal to zero. So this is the fourth useful result that we have. Now let's see why does this happen. If you recall to find the formula to calculate B2, we partially differentiated summation EI square with respect to B2. And in place of summation EI square, I can write summation YI minus B1 minus B2 capital XI whole square. And we have to partially differentiate this expression with respect to B2. Now, if we do this differentiation, we will get that this is equal to two multiplied by summation YI minus B1 minus B2 capital XI multiplied by minus capital XI. And to find the optimal value of B2, we have to put this first order condition equal to zero. Now, if you put this first order condition equal to zero, this two and this minus sign will go to the right hand side and it will become zero. So that means we will be left with summation yi minus b1 minus b2 capital xi multiplied by capital xi equal to zero. And this is nothing but ei only, right? And this implies that summation ei multiplied by capital xi is equal to zero. And once again, this is something that we get by construction. So that means the OLS method is constructed in such a manner that while we are solving for the formula to calculate B2, we get this particular thing in between. Now, before I move to my fifth useful result, there is an additional claim that I want to show you. So the claim that I'm making is this. If summation EI multiplied by capital XI is equal to zero, then sample covariance, sample covariance between EI and capital XI will also be equal to zero. So that means if this particular expression is equal to zero, then it would imply that the sample covariance between EI and capital XI is also equal to zero. Now let's see why does this happen. To start with, let's write the formula to calculate sample covariance between EI and capital XI when we are dealing with a random sample. So in this case, we can write that the sample covariance between EI and capital XI is equal to summation EI minus E bar multiplied by capital XI minus X bar divided by n minus one. And this is something that I expect you to know from your basic statistics course. Okay, now let's simplify this formula. So note that we have E bar here and using the first useful result, we can say that this E bar is equal to zero. So that means we can write that the sample covariance between EI and capital XI is summation EI multiplied by capital XI minus X bar divided by n minus one. And by multiplying these two brackets, we can write that this is equal to summation EI multiplied by capital XI minus X bar multiplied by EI divided by n minus one. And if we distribute the summation, we get that this is equal to summation EI multiplied by capital XI minus X bar multiplied by summation EI divided by n minus one. Now, once again, from the first useful result, we know that summation EI is equal to zero. That means the second expression in the numerator is equal to zero. So this implies that the sample covariance, so this implies that the sample covariance between EI and capital XI is equal to summation EI multiplied by capital XI divided by n minus one. Now have a look at my claim. So I claimed that if summation EI capital XI is equal to zero, then the sample covariance between EI and capital XI will be equal to zero. And now as you can see that sample covariance between EI and capital XI is equal to this. So that means if the numerator is equal to zero, then the sample covariance will also be equal to zero. And this completes the proof of my claim. So this is all about the useful result number four. Let's move to useful result number five.
the useful result number five is summation e i multiplied by capital Y i hat is equal to zero. So this is the useful result number five. Now let's see why does this happen. So we have to show that if we evaluate summation e i multiplied by capital Y i hat, we should get that this is equal to zero. So let's start the evaluation. So we can write that summation e i multiplied by capital Y i hat is equal to summation e i multiplied by b1 plus b2 x i. This is because y i hat is equal to b1 plus b2 x i, right? And by multiplying these two terms, we can write that this is equal to b1 multiplied by summation e i plus b2 multiplied by summation e i capital X i. And from the first useful result that we have, we know that this is equal to zero. And from the fourth useful result that we have, we know that this is equal to zero. So that means the expression summation e i multiplied by y i hat is equal to zero. So this is the fifth useful result that we have. Now, just like we did an additional claim while we were doing the useful result number four, let's do one additional claim here as well. So now I'm claiming that if summation e i multiplied by capital Y i hat is equal to zero, then the sample covariance between e i and Y i hat is also equal to zero. So that means if summation e i y i hat is equal to zero, then this implies that the sample covariance between e i and y i hat is also equal to zero. So once again, let's start with the formula that we have to calculate the sample covariance between e i and y i hat. So we can write that the sample covariance between e i and y i hat is equal to summation e i minus e bar multiplied by y i hat minus y hat bar divided by n minus one. Now, once again, we know that e bar is equal to zero. So this is equal to zero. So this implies that now the sample covariance is equal to summation e i multiplied by y i hat minus y hat bar divided by n minus one. And if we multiply these two terms, we get summation e i multiplied by capital Y i hat minus Y hat bar multiplied by summation E i divided by N minus one. And once again, we know that summation E i is equal to zero from the first useful result that we have. So this implies that the sample covariance is equal to summation E i multiplied by capital Y i hat divided by N minus one. And once again, this completes my claim. So if summation e i capital Y i hat is equal to zero, that means the numerator that we have here will be equal to zero. And this would imply that the sample covariance between e i and Y i hat is equal to zero. Now, before I end this lecture, I want to make sure that you understand this step well. Now, the thing that you have to understand here is while I was multiplying e i and this second term, I wrote e i multiplied by y i hat because e i and y i hat both are variables. And then for the second term, I wrote y hat bar multiplied by summation e i. And this is because for a particular sample, y hat bar is a constant. And let me show this to you. So basically, if you find the value of y hat bar, you will get that y hat bar is equal to b1 plus b2 x bar. This is something that you can easily find. Now, if you're working with a particular random sample, then we have already discussed that B1 will be a constant. So B1 will be a particular value, right? Similarly, B2 will be a constant given a particular random sample. And let's say if you're working with a sample in which XI is taking five values, then even X bar will be a particular constant, right? So that means the entire right-hand side will be a constant if you're working with a particular random sample. And this is why we have taken y hat bar as a constant while I was writing this particular expression, right? So this is all about the five useful results of OLS and this is all for this lecture.